All right, hello everyone, here we are. Cliff's Hole, hole six. Very interesting one here. Um, this can be a very, very challenging one to play. Let me go ahead and I'll just draw this in real quick. Get these kind of small. Um, let's talk a little bit about priority here. Um, so, again, very similar. Uh, to what I drew on the last hole, we're going to do the same thing. Tsunami 3, um, that's of course going to be third priority. We're going to put Goliath right above it. And uh, very similar to what I just wrote, which was 5, I believe. So Goliath 5 is going to be your minimum. And um, number one priority is going to be B52. Ideally, you'd like to have a six. I'm going to write six. Um, you can get away with a five on 90% of the wins. But I'm going to write six just so you are absolutely covered uh, for the shot. Um, and similarly, you know, I'm going to you know, add in those other clubs that I did because you can also use backbone. It's going to be the next one. And it's a nine. It's going to be the... The, the minimum that I recommend next best is going to be Grizzly. So once again, you know, Grizzly still better at an eight than Saturn is, but it's very marginal, really doesn't matter. Um, the one place that, you know, rolling with Saturn or Grizzly or Backbone is going to be beneficial is all tailwind situations. These guys are going to kind of get bailed out. It's going to be kind of their one chance to kind of really take a win from a guy who has one of these other ones um, because um, potentially on a side win, but anything in the headwind uh, department, uh, they're going to put themselves at a extreme disadvantage. Um, and you're going to have to, you're going to have a, an easy road to, to beat them in those situations. So let's take a look at the shots. Um, first off, I want to talk a little bit about this fairway. So ideally, it kind of depends on the wind. So if the wind is right to left, I like to land about here. If the wind is left to right, I like to shift this over a little bit. Now what this does is it kind of keeps it going in this plane um, and rolling out this way to where it keeps it from hopefully rolling down that hill. However, when we get a win this way, I like to hit this part of this ridge because it seems to kind of consistently bump up here and just go straight up towards the hole. So this, you know, is better for kind of tailwinds and, uh, you know, right to left wind. And this one, you know, left to right wind, it's going to be a little bit more favorable. Also, tailwinds are going to be, you know, primarily uh, pretty favorable as well. So either or does not matter. It's not going to change your backspin or anything. Um, it's just kind of the way that it lands. And you can see that the fairway is kind of bumpy as well. But I do want to talk about another shot because there's a second shot that I play here. And it's with Sniper. And I'll still, you know, land in this same spot. I try to hit this exact same spot, but I change my spin. Um, and the reason that this shot is kind of a little bit challenging is because usually max is pretty close to here. So you can't touch the fairway whatsoever in pretty much any situation. However, in the headwind case, you're really at a disadvantage. Um, you know, especially the straight headwind using any of these irons is going to be extremely difficult. I, I don't even recommend attempting it. It's that hard. So let's, you know, kind of split this up and we'll talk about these two different cases. You know, whether or not you choose either of these paths, nothing really changes. You still use the same spin, except for maybe a little bit of different side spin. And you'll just try to kind of play wind effect, try to keep it from rolling down that hill. So what I try to use for my base spin is about four, if at all possible. Um, as it gets to a tailwind, I'd like to get it up to about 4.5. So four and a quarter, four and a quarter. And alternatively, in the headwinds, I'm just going to kind of leave these blank because I don't even like going at it with a headwind. Um, very, very little. Um, it would have to be kind of right in here 
and I might try, you know, three and a half in this situation. So pretty much anything that's, you know, four o'clock to seven, uh, eight o'clock is kind of the strongest headwind that I'll try to tackle on and actually still hit the iron shot. And that's more or less the way that I'll play it. Um, but alternatively, what you're going to see me do is I'm going to do this blue shot pretty much primarily. And the way that you have to, you have to increase this spin a bit. So here um, I might use 5.5, 5.5. And that's because you're coming in with, uh, you know, a little bit different club. So I'll usually use about 5.5 or so uh, for all three cases, depending on how large the wind gets. If it gets really large, um, you know, I could maybe get away with five. Um, if, it, if it's very small, then I could cheat it up to a six. So it's really going to be wind dependent, but these are all backspins for both situation. One's backspin wood though. So this is a backspin with a wood. So this is going to be pretty much a sniper eight, but I can get away with it. Um, if I don't have sniper eight, um, I can still get away with this shot with a uh, Guardian 2, alternatively. These are pretty much the only two clubs that I would, you know, pretty much consider using it because I still need 60-some to do it. 60-some spin, back spin, which is, you know, very large amount. So let's take a look at the rings real quick. So here's Sidewind. Here's Tailwind. So those are the iron cases, and then we'll talk the head, ca head case last. So let's take a look here. So what I'll usually do is max plus 20. Now what I still need to do is I need to do um, wind effect. So I can't just play max plus 20. I still need to offset my guide to accommodate and also need to watch where I'm landing on the fairway. Because I need to land on a consistent spot and play that overplay. So i got to make sure that it still hits that spot and that, because you can see that it's very hilly. And that's usually where the mistakes come in, is guys will get on the wrong side of the hills. Um, now let's talk about the headwind case, which is going to be with the wood. Now I'll play this a lot closer to mid to max. So I'll play it very close to mid if the wind is small. So I'll just use mid club on the wood. So let's say the wind is 7 or 8. And I'll just use whatever the mid adjustment is. However, I'll need to assume that I've already gone X amount of rings. So for instance, if the line is here, I can't put it on the fairway. I have to assume that I've already gone five rings. So I'll need to, you know, punch in my, you know, whatever my sniper value is. You know, let me just get this punched in real quick, just so you guys can see. And... Um, you know, let's say we were talking about 8.6 miles per hour. I need to go seven rings at min. Mid, I need to go eight rings. So if I'm already five rings past, I only need to go three more rings. So you get that. You need to kind of short hit it. You need to, and, and you need to just kind of focus on the spot and just know that it's going to land and go. So you can set up with the short iron or with the long iron and just get the, get your pitch set up to where it goes you know, the trajectory is going towards the hole um, with maybe just a little bit of offset for the wind. And then you can club up and then just basically, you know, rotate the screen a little and just assume, say, be like, OK, well, I've already gone five or six rings, whatever it is. And then I'll just start to increase and say, oh, I need to go two more. I need to use that mid number. However, if the wind gets large, I might need to use the max number. So that was an 8.6. Let's say I'm up here at a 12.9. So I might actually need to get a little bit closer to this max number. Might not need to get right up on it to a 13, but I might need to play pretty close to it. So I might need to play, you know, at least 12, 12 something just to make sure. However, keep in mind that you've probably already gone five rings. So you'll only need to go an additional, you know, six to seven. And, you know, I, 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 I could probably say, you know, max minus 5% or or somewhere in that, you know, you'll, you shouldn't ever need to actually go to the max number. So max is going to be pretty much an extreme case. So mid to max minus 5%. So hopefully that helps you guys, and uh, good luck. See you guys on the next one.